Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, we will discuss now multiple linear regression, multiple linear regression. So, uh, the presentation will be like this, this is a very basic uh, um, lecture on multiple linear regression. So, as a result we will give you a conceptual model, when what is a regression model and what are the reg uh, assumptions of regression model. and and. Uh, and if possible, I will give you the, uh, uh, the equation for parameter estimation, which will be discussed in next lecture also. So, see this one, suppose uh, you just think of a experiment, think of a experiment, where you, you, are, you are interested to characterize the process, or I can say process characterization is the issue. If you recall my uh, that earlier lectures, you know that I have given a process model with controllable factors, uncontrollable factors, uh, with uh, y the output, input, controllable x, maybe uncontrollable z, and something like this. If I if you if you find out suppose we want to categorize the process with reference to controllable factor, then y is a function of x. So, that is what you want to you want to find out. Now, that is then y linear equation will be y beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. So, this is known as simple linear regression, simple linear regression. So, it will be a regression line like this, this side your x 1 this side is y and this will be your beta 0 and the slope represent beta 1 and this is your this any point on this line is y that expected value of y given given x equal to let it be x i x 1 i this one let it be or i 1 x i 1 then it is x i 1 y 1, 1 for the x 1 variable i is the ith observation. So, what is the value uh, point here or any point on this regression line what it will depict? It will depict that y uh, that, that is the mean value of y with respect to x equal to x 1. Now, if there are more than one factor then then your equation will be like this. Suppose, there are k number of factors. So, factors means k number of I am talking about controllable factors here, we are not considering z at this moment let it be. We can include z here also, but for simplicity I am not doing because our aim is to see multiple linear regression. So, then this one this equation represent multiple linear regression. Okay. In multiple linear regression, this one suppose suppose we have three factors A, B, and C. Let they are measured with continuous scale, and we are saying x1, x2, x3. Mm, and and our quality variable is y. So, I can write linear regression like this beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon. So, this is also a MLR, but here what happened this x 1 x 2 x 3 independent. If there is some amount of dependency between this x 
So, we can we can also write something like this beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus beta 1 2 x 1 x 2 plus beta 1 3 x 1 x 3 plus beta 2 3 x 2 x 3 plus epsilon. Here you see there are parameters related to the factors uh, or the variables and this basically this variable x we say independent variables i v h and y is known as dependent variables dependent variable and independent all x are independent variables. So, if we assume that the independent variable are correlated, so then we are creating some other coefficient which takes care of their correlation part like this. So, you are creating additional variable variable with the existing variable. So, this is the this is some kind of in the, in the first class I say that this is some kind of <coughs> mean effects kind of things and later on we will see these are beta 1 beta 2 are the mean effects kind of thing beta 1 2 these are interaction effects kind of thing. Okay. So, it may so happen that there is three way interaction then beta 1 2 3 x 1 x 2 x 3 plus epsilon. So, and then uh, if I think that there, there is the nonlinear part uh, quadratic effect is there. So, slowly the nonlinear part also can be added with this kind of regression equation. For the timing we will be we will be discussing with this kind of relation or with this. Okay. So, now let us see one example here. Suppose the viscosity of polymer is of importance whose behavior we wanted to um, assess and we also want to characterize this with reference to two process variables reaction temperature x 1 and catalyst speed rate x 2. And suppose we assume that they are linearly related, it may be sure that they are not linearly related, but we are uh, assuming that linearly uh, related and another one is that let we are assuming that they are independent x 1 x 2 are independent in nature. And there those things can be tested once the experiment is done over and the data is collected that can be tested also. Suppose uh, the uh, experiment is conducted and you have 16 observations and with different temperature and different catalyst rate your viscosity values are like this. So, you see that in the in y there are variability of y, y values are changing and this may be because of change in temperature and change in catalyst rate. And if they are linearly related then then we, uh, we, we, we can develop a multiple linear regression. So, the, uh, the what is the usual procedure? Procedure is like this find out the uh, in, uh, uh, interesting variables or the uh, variable of interest. In this particular example, temperature, catalyst, speed rate, and viscosity. Then find identify the response variable, it is the viscosity. Explanatory variable or independent variable, sometimes you say this is temperature and this, and our characterization relationship y equal to function of x. So, then this model, linear model, multiple linear model will be like this beta 0, beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon. Okay. So, what is the job here? Our job is to estimate the beta values. What is our job? Suppose we consider this equation. Our job is estimate beta, which is basically a vector beta 0, beta 1 and beta 2 with respect to this equation. With respect to general k variable, beta will be beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, like beta k, k cross k plus 1 cross 1 vector. 
So, those the, 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 this will be estimated, we will see later on that we basically minimize the error a measure. This error will be minimized with respect to all the observations considered. So, that is why we will consider some square error and minimize some square error. This will give you this value using ordinary least square, ordinary, ordinary least square OLS regression, ordinary least square method. Okay, so, there can be ML, ML maximum likelihood estimation, but in this case multiple linear both will give you the same final formula. The assumptions are errors are normally distributed, the variability of y is constant across all level of x which is had homoscedasticity. Observations are independent to each other and identically distributed there is no or little existence of auto correlation. If you see the linear equation here, so you see y is function of this and here importantly this x values they are fixed values beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 they are constant values. So, this portion, this portion is a fixed portion pattern portion. So, but y is variable so, the this the variability part the randomness part will be captured by error. Okay. So, other way in the first one when you are saying that the, the samples drawn from normally distributed population means y is normal. So, it indicates that the error is also normal. So, error is normally distributed errors normally distributed. So, if I say epsilon this is normal distribution with mu and sigma square, sigma square will be variability mm, mu is 0. So, it is 0 sigma square whatever variability of y is there that is going to error. So, with reference to simple linear regression when one variable pictorially can be represented like this suppose this is x this one is y and this is my regression line suppose this is the this is my x 1 and and this value is x 2 suppose this value is x i similarly x n values are there then what happened this as I told you that y is beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus epsilon here this is the fixed part this for any x value when you find the value on this line this is basically this portion this part this value is this. So, now if I want to find out the expected value of y then this is expected value of this equation beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus plus epsilon. So, ultimately this portion for a fixed x value if it is a fixed value this is beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus what is the expected value of epsilon it is 0. So, that is why I say we said that for this one gives you the expected value of y given x equal to x 1 in this case or x equal to x i. So, now the 0 uh, that is why this 0 y g uh, that uh, this is first part. Second part is that variability where it will go it will it will be variability will be represented like this. So, everywhere for a fixed value of x you can get different value of y and that variability is like this. So, x i this variability is like this x n. So, that is what this is basically variability sigma square sigma square sigma square sigma square. So, we are saying then the first assumption is errors are normally distributed with mean mu equal to 0 and sigma square is the variance this sigma square is the variability of the of observed uh, y variable. Now, another second one is that that common variance for all population that is uh, this one common variance what do I mean we are mean, mean common variance means here first one is errors are normally distributed second one is common variance. So, for x 1 the y variability x 2 y variability when x equal to x i y variability they will be same. 
So, everywhere it will be sigma square that is known as homoscedasticity. Homoscedasticity. So, y's variability across all values of x will be constant and that will be sigma square. Third one is that whether when you are drawing sample, uh, sample the observations. So, every observation they will be independent. So, you have i equal to how many observation 1 to n observations x is there x 1 x 2 like this finally, y is also there. So, this is first observation second observation. So, these observations will be independent. Okay. Suppose, if I consider y 1 to y n. So, all those y 1 is no way affecting y 2 another they are independent and they are coming from the same population that is normal population. So, they each of them are also normally distributed with the corresponding population uh, population distribution here we will go for one population and we, we draw n, n number of samples or a sample of n observations then each of the observations will be coming from that population with parameter may be normal parameter mu and sigma square then they will be this one. Yeah, up, apart from this what will happen because uh, if, if this y is no, uh, independent every observation then the errors will also become independent and the, this y's variability as the fixed portion is coming out that the variability portion is going to the error that is why error is having epsilon is having n 0 uh, sigma square variability. Okay. And other one is there should not be any auto, auto correlation that means independent if they are independent there is no auto correlation means y 1 is not dependent on y 2 or y 2 not dependent on y 1 as such y i is not dependent on may be y i minus k may be at any lag may be 1 lag or 2 lag, but it will, they will not be auto correlation. Okay. So, so these are the uh, these are the few assumptions and then what I want to say that next class we will see uh, elaboratedly, but suppose we say that y is beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2. So, like this 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 beta k x k plus epsilon. So, this can be written like this x y equal to x beta plus epsilon. Okay. And, uh, and we will see that how what is the x and what is the beta when i equal to 1 to n. So, how this x will be compute x will be derived beta will be derived all those things. Usually, what we will see that when I will x will be n cross k and beta will be beta plus 1 into k and like this and finally, using OLS regression we will compute beta cap equal to x transpose x x transpose x inverse x, x transpose y, where x is nothing but we have n observations. So, x 0, x 1 like this x k. So, we have constant term for everywhere 1 1 1 1 1 and this will be x 1 1 x 2 1 suppose there is i x i 1 then n 1 and I like this x 1 k x 2 2 k then x i k and x uh, n suppose this is s x i k and x n k. So, then this is 1 0 2 k so that and it is n. So, n cross k plus 1 this is the design this is known as design matrix. And beta will be beta will be your beta 0, beta 1 2, beta k this will be k plus 1 cross 1 parameter to be estimated and y is nothing but that y 1, y 2 2, y n this is n cross 1 this is the this is what is basically the dependent variable observations. So, here in the design matrix you are getting an interceptum where all 1 every row content 1 and the remaining this portion this is basically the independent variable part these are the observed or fixed values for x 1 uh, x 2 and x k at different 
uh, observation uh, bringing you the different settings basically with reference to uh, experiment ok. So, fine. So, uh, please keep in mind multiple linear regression is a very very important topic for uh, for design of experiment because we will be later using the concept called response surface response surface way response surface. So, this response surface will give you the behavior of the y. For example, if I have two factors suppose a or I can say x 1 or b if I say x 2. So, depending on when I, I you want to change a and b with a purpose then the y will be the the y values may may create a, a create something like this this kind of surface. Now, what happened for a particular value of a and b or particular value of x 1 and x 2 you will be having the y value and if that y value is desirable one. So, you will run the process at that x 1 and x 2 controllable values or other I can say factors. So, thank you next class we will see more details.